This is it. This is the new series, everyone. Welcome. First episode of Jamie and Chef. Jamie and Chef. Think Jamie and Julia, minus Julia. And in her place, there will be a new cookbook from a new chef every six episodes. Six. I didn't just pull that number out of a hat. I thought that would be enough time for me to kind of get to know a cookbook a little bit, you know, sink my teeth in, try out some of the classics, the signature dishes, have a bit of a cookbook residency. And then after six, we'll move on to someone else. And then the rotation will continue until the end of time. I'll never run out of chefs. I'll never run out of recipes. You know, it's gonna be some stuff that I really have no business making too. And it's gonna be done for the first time. So, you know, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a challenge. We're gonna learn a lot, but uh, no but. I've already accepted the mission. We're getting into it right now. We're starting off with a doozy. Thomas Keller. This is someone that, I mean, if you don't know who he is, don't worry about it. I don't know that much. I just, I learned who he was through one of my favorite books. There's like a chapter dedicated to him. Let me go get the book. In this book right here, A Cook's Tour from Anthony Bourdain, one of my faves, there is an entire chapter dedicated to his experience eating at Thomas Keller's, TK's restaurant, the French Laundry, for the very first time. His mind was blown. And I think there's like a pull quote in here I can grip. It was far and away the most impressive restaurant meal I'd ever had. The French Laundry. That's the restaurant. It's like a three Michelin star fine dining restaurant in California. And it's got one of those tasting menus where you're like, you're sitting there for hours and you're served dish after dish after dish. And they're like the smaller portion. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the French Laundry is also the name of Thomas Keller's cookbook right here. And this features the recipes from this restaurant. So if we're gonna circle this all back to me in this cookbook here, yeah, I gotta make recipes out of this book. So uh, we're gonna start it off with this one. It's a signature dish, his most famous one. It's called Oysters and Pearls. Sabillon of pearl tapioca with Malpec oysters and Ocetra caviar. So I float one or two plump oysters on top of tapioca custard and garnish it with Ocetra caviar for what has become a signature dish. A lot of people think this is an unusual pairing, but for me, it's logical. Tapioca, pearls, pearls, double pearls, oysters, logical or not, it's a very sensual combination. A sabillon is a light sauce traditionally made with egg yolks, sugar, and wine. So now that we got that covered, take your jacket off, stay a while. We are gonna start off with the oysters. Let's get shucking. <laughs> so say hello to my little friends. I need 16 meat, 16 meat, sorry, 16 meaty oysters. He recommends Malpac oysters, which is a type of oyster. Um, I wanted oysters that were fresh for today, and this is the best I could find. These are Blue Point Oyster. I looked online, it appears to be a good substitute for Malpac. I tried looking for Malpac, I couldn't find it. So we're gonna stick with these. Do they look meaty? They do. Um, what do I gotta do? Scrub them with a brush. That was pointless. Follow this method for shucking an oyster. So hold an oyster in a towel to protect your hand and with the rounded side down, lean the wider end of the oyster against the table for support. Push an oyster knife. Just pick this up. Just pick this up. Actually, you know what? I have two of them. I bought one by accident. So if you want an oyster knife, you let me know in the comments. I will pick someone at random and I will send you this extra oyster knife. Only if you want it. Also, I can write something on it like, uh, it's shucking time. Push an oyster knife under the hinge at the narrow end of the shell. Don't jam it the knife in or you risk damaging the oyster. You will hear a pop. I don't know how to open the oyster. Okay. <gasps> that was easy. That was too easy. That is a bad oyster. <laughs> that is not good. That is completely empty. There's nothing in this oyster shell. Uh-oh, do I have knockoff oysters? Okay, I think I got it open. Twist the knife to loosen the shell, keeping the knife directly under the top shell. 
Run the blade along the right side to cut through the muscle. Slide the knife under the meat to detach the second muscle holding the oyster in place. There needs to be some oyster juice though. Reserve the oyster and all its juices in a small bowl. Meat, thank you. Not much juice in that one though. I'll be honest, there wasn't much juice in that. Round side down, lean the wider side against the table, cover with the towel, jam your knife through till you hear a pop. Got it, got it. Keeping the knife directly under the top shell. Run the blade through the right side to cut through the muscle. Slide the knife under the meat to detach the second muscle. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oyster, round side down and wide side leaning against the table. Got it, then twist the knife to loosen the shell. And then keeping the knife directly under the top shell, run the blade along the right side to cut through the muscle. That will release the top shell. Slide the knife under the meat to detach the second muscle. Into my bowl. Here, I'm getting worried that I'm not gonna have enough juice. The goal is to have half a cup of oyster juice from these oysters. I don't think any juice is coming out of these things. Maybe, but maybe not. Are we ready for the big boy? This is a big boy. This is a big boy. This is a big boy. Ah! All right, I found some juice. That is a... That's huge, that's a big win. Yes, good oyster. All right, let's keep going, keep on shucking, keep on, sh just keep on shucking. Oysters have been officially shucked, shucked the hell out of them. And I always wanted to know how to do that, so well, now you know. Sieve me, thank you. Strain the oyster juice into a separate bowl. He's telling me I need half a cup of oyster juice. This is not even remotely close. This is, that's pitiful. That's like one eighth cup. I hope that's okay. Pitiful yield this year, but uh, I guess we're gonna have to make that work. I don't think it's gonna affect anything besides we gotta use it for the sauce down the road. But that's all we got, so we can't cry about it. We have to move on. So get the oysters over here onto the old cutting board. Trim away the muscle and the outer ruffled edge of each oyster. So the muscle is obviously that. That's kind of not something you'd want to eat. Bye-bye. Is this the ruffles? Don't trim that off because it's kind of ruffly. Okay, this one obviously has ruffles. Big time ruffler. All those oyster shells and this is all we got. There's some good ones in there though. There are some good ones. All right, oyster trimmings can go here. What you gotta do is hold on to every piece of that oyster, except for the shell. I don't think we need the shell today. Clean up the cutting board, sir. So I have read over this recipe with a fine tooth comb, like five times. For like a normal person, that would be uh, once. You know me in the reading, it's, it's a problem. Anyway, we've learned throughout the years how important mise en place is. Like, <laughs> I know the upsides when it's ready, the downsides, I prefer the upsides. So he says here, a little reminder, that timing is important in the completion of this dish. The cooking should be a continuous process. So have the cream whip the water for the sebeillant hot and the remaining ingredients ready. So, with that all being said, what do we gotta do, Jamie? Get your stuff, mise en place, mise en place. Keep it all in your head, what's going on? Okay. So every single thing I need for this recipe is right in front of me, including this. <laughs> Chives, this is all that was available at the shop today. Okay, I'm interested in perfection only. We need a mince on, <laughs> yeah, right, Jamie. So we're gonna do the nicest mince you can, just, I need some breathing in here. The nicest mince I can mustard. 
Mustard. Muster. All right, those are minced. They need to be organized. Run a tight kitchen over here. So the recipe says you need small pearl tapioca. Look at this. Small pearl tapioca. What the hell is that? Made from the root of the cassava plant. I mean, it's tapioca, but like, what is this? <laughs> I just put it back because it is falling all over the place. All right, so an hour ago, I soaked one third cup of this small pearl tapioca in a cup of milk and it was to rehydrate it. So I did that. That's great. We'll get to that in a second. So before I do anything, I need to... It's the most expensive ingredient I have ever purchased in the history of this show. I'm excited to tell you what this is all about. But we're not gonna get into that right now. We gotta start cooking. Bowl me. Thank you. So in my bowl, half a cup of heavy cream. We're gonna give that the old whip. Until it can hold its shape. If that holds its shape, that's holding its shape. Cool, put this in the fridge. So drain the softened tapioca in a strainer. Thank you. Drain the tapioca, discard the milk, and rinse, 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 rinsey rinse. Okay. This goes into a small, heavy pot. Okay, done. Pour the remaining three quarter cup of milk. Where's the milk? Oh, shh. Pour the remaining three quarter cup of milk, remaining because I used one cup of it for that tapioca and I don't need that milk anymore. Discarded. So I got my three quarter cup and three quarter cup of heavy cream. What do I do? Read the sentence. Pour the remaining three quarter cup of milk and three quarter cup of cream over the oyster trimmings. Those are in the fridge. Oyster trimmings, yay! Oyster trimmings into a saucepan with the remaining three quarter cup of milk and this should be three quarter cup of heavy cream. Bring this to a simmer over here. Uh, the tapioca in the other pan I have here, I need to strain this in here. Where do I keep putting that damn thing? Thank you, I'll hold on to it from now on. Wrong one, this one. Obviously we do not need those oyster trimmings. They can go bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've read the recipe over a million times, but I just do not have it memorized. And each step is so specific that I just want to get it all right. So it's just like, do one thing, read, concentrate, cook the tapioca over medium heat. Please join us. Hello, I gotta cook this for seven to eight minutes with this wooden spoon here stirring constantly until it has thickened and I can drag the wooden spoon across and you can pull it right through. What? <laughs> until it leaves a trail when it is pulled through, yeah. I'm looking for that trail. I don't think we're there yet. Soon, that leaves a trail. Yeah, when I pull it through, it leaves a trail. I would consider that a trail, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna cook this for an additional five to seven minutes. Let's keep it stirring. Until the mixture has no resistance in the center and is translucent. The mixture will be sticky and if you lift some up on the spoon and let it fall, some should cling to the spoon. That's five to seven minutes. This thing is done. Remove the pot from the... Remove the pot from the heat. I gotta move on to the sabillon. I need my four. Okay, so I got a saucepan full of water here. It just says have it be hot, not a boil or anything. So I'll just make it hot. Thank you. And where are the egg yolks? The four egg yolks. Four egg yolks in a bowl. Uh, okay, so this is what I'm thinking with this oyster juice. Hear me out. I have a one eighth cup, I need a quarter cup, and I don't wanna like do something that I shouldn't be doing, even though I'm about to do something that I'm definitely not supposed to be doing. Would you shut it? 
I'm trying to talk to the our company. All right. I know, I know, we'll talk later. I need a quarter cup of this stuff. So I'm thinking what if I add like, just like a little bit of water, just to water down ever so slightly, just to get to a quarter cup. Does it still taste like oysters? Yes. Oh yes, oyster juice in with the egg yolks. I have a saucepan here full of water. I'm bringing that up to a simmer, I guess, and Whisk would be great. And I'm gonna put this on top of here. <laughs> on a medium heat. I'm gonna whisk it vigorously to incorporate as much air into this thing as possible. And I'm whisking it until it's thickened and lightened and this foam has subsided. There's a lot of foam. Waiting on that foam to subside. So, I right, uh, remove it from the heat and whisk it quickly off the heat for a moment. So the sabillon will hold a ribbon when it falls from the whisk. Checkmate. Hot sabillon mixture into the tapioca. Where is a? Uh... Oh shit. Okay, Charlie Brown. Stir that in with the tapioca. Also add in a generous amount of black pepper. How generous. So, what am I on to now? Oh, quarter cup of creme fraiche. Oh, the whipped cream. The whipped cream from earlier in the fridge. Okay, where's Charlie? Charlie. Okay, Charlie Brown. I need to add in all this whipped cream. Mix that. So I gotta expect this tapioca to be a creamy, pale yellow. Tapioca pearls suspended in the mixture. Season lightly, but remember that the oysters and the caviar will be salty. It's pretty good. Okay, spoon the tapioca into, oh, I need like a dish. I bought something brand new for the show. Where the hell is it? There it is. This is the nicest dish I've ever owned. I wanted something that was gonna look like we were somewhere not here. Look at this thing. Uh, but I need to spoon a quarter cup worth of this in here quarter cup. I'm gonna do a healthy quarter cup because it's just me. I know we're not at the French Laundry right now, but just a little one up would be nice. Okay, that's a little slightly more than a quarter cup, but I like the look of that. You know, this is me we're talking here. I need a little bit more, <laughs> a, little more a little more substance tonight. Tap the dish on the counter so the tapioca forms an even layer. Offset spatula. Even that sucker out. Yes. All right, I'm just gonna cover that with this, with this reusable wrap with the pretty, pretty flowers on it. So this is gonna go in the fridge until I need it. The fridge is off right now. Now it's on. Next step, turn the oven on to 350. Easy step, moving on to the sauce. Small saucepan. <laughs> so three tablespoons of dry vermouth, one and a half tablespoons of white wine vinegar, and remaining reserved oyster juice. We're fresh out of that, that's long gone. So let's just, uh... and one and a half tablespoons of my minced up shallots. To a simmer. Keep it simmering until most of the liquid has evaporated. Shallot is glazed, but not dry. Eight tablespoons of butter and I add a piece, have it incorporate, and then I add another piece. And rinse and repeat until there's no more butter. All right, turn the heat off. Is a buttery sauce. 
Um, I, I gotta talk about my caviar, right? How often am I buying caviar? This is the first and maybe only, who knows? It is Ocetra caviar, and Ocetra is native to the Caspian and Black Sea. It is a truly prized sturgeon known for its firm roe and nutty flavor. It comes with a mother of pearl spoon. I don't know if I'm gonna use my mother of pearl tonight, maybe another day, because I need to do something else. This is an ounce worth, and this is as much as I wanted to invest <laughs> this is like 80 bucks, and that is the cheapest I could find. Of course, the book says you need one to two ounces, but that's for eight servings, and since it's just little old me right here, no one else is home right now. Just me and my caviar. I don't think I've ever had caviar. And if I did, it was like at a wedding or something, and I was probably intoxicated and don't remember having it, so I don't think I've ever had it. Oh, maybe I did. Never mind, I did at one point. I probably have a photo on my phone. If there is, I will post it right here. Here it is. Get a good look. Where the hell is the, this tapioca? Place that on my baking sheet into the oven four to five minutes until it just begins to puff up. I did check. The plate I'm using will survive in the oven. It's porcelain after all. Holy Smokes. Let's add the oysters into the sauce, as well as a tablespoon of my minced chives. Spoon two oysters onto the, what? First things first, two oysters on top, and then some of the sauce. Can we clean that up? All right, so I gotta make a, uh, I gotta do a uh, quenelle of caviar. Excuse me while I go into my dishwasher to get the spoons for the quenelle. Dip the spoon into the caviar, and then you need an You need another spoon. You gotta make it into an oval shape, edgeless oval shape. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, plop the quenelle of caviar right here. All right, I don't know what else you can... This thing is done. Order up. Never have I been so curious. Oi, oysters and pearls. This thing is more than all right. Mm, better eat every last bite of that, sonny boy. You can spend hours making it, but it just takes a minute. It's all gone. It's not all, all gone. I still have leftovers for whoever wants it. The only problem is I had all the caviar. I can't imagine just being served just a little portion of that and thinking, oh, okay, I'm good. No, I need more. That tapioca, I was just like, at the beginning, I was like, what the hell is this thing? But you know, you go through the motions, it all came together. It was a joy to eat it. It was like fun and soft and ended up being like, it was like a tapioca pudding. It was a tapioca pudding, right? Pudding. I mean, the butter sauce was something straight out of a Julia Child fever dream. Similar to Julia's in some respects, but also didn't taste a whole lot like hers. I'm so used to hers that this one was like a welcome change. It was like a combination of being like, like the richness of the butter, but it was like also a tangy sweetness too. I must've been from like the vermouth and the shallot and the white wine vinegar mixed with the butter. I mean, if you're a fan of oysters, then you're gonna like the little treat on top with the two of them, because it's like teasing you. You kind of want another one, but you're like, no, that's the perfect amount. It's all been calculated. I wouldn't change a thing. Throw in the caviar and well, the dish is all tied together. I don't think the dish is complete without the caviar. There's something about it that just kind of binds it all together. It's a beautiful thing. This is a really beautiful thing. I don't know, there's so many flavors that I'm just like, I've been sitting here talking for the last 20 minutes. The dish has been gone, so, well, it's time to move on. I will move on. Our very delicious and successful first visit to the French Laundry here in my kitchen. That's all I have today. 
This was Jamie and Chef Thomas Keller. See you later. <laughs> bon appetit. So as much as I am uh, officially now a caviar boy, <sighs> if you blindfolded me and fed me a spoon of catfish caviar and told me it was Ocetra, would I know the difference? Would I be able to tell? That is the question.